Hello and happy Friday. I am here today. We are going to do a year end evaluation. So if you haven't done so already, this is one of the key things to scaling your business, growing your business and really finding success within all of your endeavors for your business and even your personal life. So the more goals we set, the more important it is for us to take the time to evaluate where we were, what we've done, and where we are. So there's a, there's a lot of things I want you to consider. So what I'm going to do is I've got a bunch of notes because I want to walk you through this process and I don't want to miss any of these key questions that I want you to ask yourself and the key things that I want you to dive into for your mostly business, but you can apply this to really every aspect of your life. So some of the, those things to look at. Number one, did you meet your goals? Right? That has to be the first question because we can't dive into any of these other things if we haven't discovered whether or not we met our goals. So where are you in that process of meeting your goals? We're at the end of the year. 2022 is just around the corner and it's important to take a look back and this is not an exercise of oh you didn't meet your goals so shame on you absolutely not there is no shame in meeting your goals what I want you to do or what I want to encourage you to do is take all of this information and really do a deep dive that is not going to take you more than an hour to do this and really look at like I said before where you've been and where you are today Maybe those goals weren't met. Maybe you didn't make six figures this year. Maybe you didn't make um, the financial goal that you set for yourself, whether it was six figures or 50, 50K or 20K. It doesn't matter. Whatever that number is, if you didn't meet it, it's not the end of the world. But what we're going to do today is dive in to see why you didn't meet that goal and what can you do differently for 2022 so that you can meet that goal next year. So number one is, did you meet your goals? Did you meet your financial goals? Also, when you write out whether or not you met that financial goal, what other goals did you meet? I want you to keep that in the back of your mind. We're gonna dive deeper into that later, but I want you to keep that in the back of your mind as well because there are other goals that you may have set and I want you to, re to recognize whether you met those or not as well. If you didn't meet your goals, can you pinpoint why? Was it illness? a tragedy in the family, a death in the family, um, disruptions in your family life or your, you know, your personal life? Um, was there a change in your business model? Did you get distracted? Did you find yourself procrastinating? And when you got distracted, did you lose sight of your goals? Did you lose sight of the strategy that was going to get you to those goals? So you have to look at the big picture. You can't just say, oh, I didn't make my goals and it's because nobody found me online. That's not the case. That's not why you didn't meet your goals. There are other things that happened throughout the course of the year that may have caused you not to meet your goals. I'm gonna be perfectly candid here. I didn't meet my financial goals this year, but what I did do this year was I wrote a book. I transitioned my business. I retired from photography and focus solely on coaching. So I had messaging changes, I had brand changes, I had so many changes throughout the course of this year that even just without those three months of photography income, that made a significant impact on my financial goals for the year. And I hadn't factored into that, factored that into my financial goals at the beginning of the year. I also had the death in the family. So, you know, all of those things though add up to causing us not to meet our goals. So I want you to factor in what were those things? What were those things that happened this year that caused you to get off track and not be able to focus, not be able to do the things that you needed to do to reach your goal? Okay, so once you've recognized whether you met your goal, whether you didn't meet your goal, it's important to look at what was your mindset? If you met your goals, chances are you had a positive mindset, you had an abundance mindset, you were positive, you had energy, you were motivated, and you wanted to take action. If you didn't meet your goals, let's dive into mindset because that's going to be a significant reason why you didn't meet your goals. So how was your mindset this year? Can you pinpoint times when you felt suffocated with fear? Can you, can you, think of times where you sat in questions, 
questioned, why aren't people hiring me? Why are people, why is my phone not ringing? Why am I not getting emails? Where are the people? Did fear come into play? Did fear cause you to not take action? Did you find yourself scrolling through social media and comparing yourself to others? Did you find yourself feeling like an imposter? And how often did you find yourself feeling that way? A lot of times when we're new to entrepreneurship, those feelings of comparison and imposter syndrome rear their ugly heads frequently. Not to say they don't happen the longer that we're in the entrepreneurial journey, but this is why mindset is so key because we have to be able to control those thoughts and navigate them so that they don't hold us back and prevent us from taking action. So did you have times when you were skeptical about making money? when you thought, well, I'm not worthy of making money. What were you thinking about money? Did you welcome money in? Did you believe you were worthy of money? Um, what were those thoughts and feelings about money? And were you afraid? Did you believe in the price that you were charging? Did you believe you were worthy of charging for your services? And did you believe in the perceived value that was associated with what your offer is? Okay, were you afraid of judgment? Judgment on social media, what people would say to you, what family members might say to you when you were thinking about your business and navigating your journey as an entrepreneur. If you had any of those thoughts, any of that negative mindset, then you were coming from a place of lack, insufficiency, scarcity. And what happens when we have that mindset is we become fearful and lack is the absolute most common reason that people fear or have fear in their businesses. So if you were coming from that place of lack and scarcity, you're going to end up having fear and procrastinating. Fear always leads to procrastination. It holds you back. And when you start procrastinating, what happens? Then you end up in paralysis, maybe analysis paralysis and analyzing like why in the world are people not finding me? What are the numbers? How many saves am I getting? How many likes am I getting? And all of these vanity factors that they're great to, to look at, but those aren't the reasons why people aren't hiring you. Remember, we've talked a lot about, and I know if you've listened to the podcast, you've seen my post, our thoughts create our results. So if our belief system is off, if we're not believing in our calling, if we're not believing that God has a plan for us, if we are not believing that God is going to guide us and help us through whatever it is that we are navigating in our business or our lives, if we don't have that solid foundation of belief, we're gonna have negative thoughts. And if we have those negative thoughts, we're going to have negative emotions. And negative emotions are gonna result in in action and without action we can't move the needle forward on our businesses so it's really important that we look at mindset and we discover where we were lacking in mindset and where we can shift that mindset to an abundance mindset and when I talk about an abundance mindset I'm not just talking about dollars I am NOT just talking about money and making six figures or seven figures or whatever you see online I'm talking about that inner joy that you know, aligning your values, feeling like you are valued, feeling like you are worthy, and allowing that joy and accepting those blessings into you that are gonna keep you feeling good, happy, motivated, energized, and wanting to take action. Or not taking action, but intentionally not taking action, giving yourself that grace to step back and stop doing and start being. Because Ultimately, as entrepreneurs, we get into this cycle, right? And you probably have a great to-do list and you probably can look back at the year to see everything that you accomplished and everything you did. But were those things part of your strategy for growth? Were those things part of your strategy for making an impact? Were they part of the strategy for following your calling? Or were they distractions because other people online were doing them? This is so key for, for evaluating where you spent that time this year. Okay, just because that mindset was there this year though, if you did experience a negative mindset, if you did experience those setbacks or something holding you back, that fear, that procrastination, it's not the end of the world because we have a new year and there can be a new you in terms of your mindset and how you move forward. 
So let's dive into a little bit about those things that I want you to do in order to shift how you're looking at your business right now, especially if you didn't meet your goals. If you did meet your goals, these things still apply because we want to, I guess, pat ourselves on the back, but we want to see what worked in our business and how we did achieve our goals, right? So that we can stay on track for the next year to continue to allow ourselves to expand those goals, make them bigger, um, you know, continue to dream big, continue to do the things and have a bigger impact. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. And I will be looking at my notes because there are so many things that I want you to, that I don't wanna forget. Um, okay, so I'm gonna give you questions that you're going to ask yourself for your business. You can apply this to life too, like I said, but we're talking specifically today about your business. So as you start to evaluate, evaluate your business, I want you to make this list of questions and then I want you to fill in the blanks. You probably aren't gonna have time to fill in the blanks while I'm talking. I will try to make the questions, um, say them slowly so that you have time to write them. If you don't have time to write them, come back, listen again. And the replay will be up on in the group as well as on my YouTube channel so that you can even pause it if you are watching and you want to take notes. All right, so you, by now you should have a pen and paper. So here we go, the first question is, how many emails did you send? How many emails did you send to your email marketing list? That's it, I just wanna know how many. Then I want to ask you how many social media posts did you do? How many did you create and how many did you share? I don't want you to dive deep into the likes, I don't want you to dive deep into the shares, the saves, I just wanna know how much content you put out on social media. If you put content out on multiple platforms, that that's awesome. You can, you know, whatever, triple the number of posts then, but I would just want you to have an idea of how much content you put out on social media. How many posts did you create? How many times did you take advantage of PR and guest on a podcast? Someone else's podcast, if you're a podcast host. How many times did you guest on a podcast to share your message and reach a larger audience? Next is how many times did you do a live stream or a live training like what I'm doing today? Even if you don't have a Facebook group, you can go live. You can go live on you're in your Facebook business page. You can go live on Instagram. You can go live on TikTok. How many times did you live stream to your audience? How many times did you go live to give them value? How many times did you teach in someone else's group, community, or membership? So those opportunities come up, you know, as collaborations. Maybe it was a summit that you did. How many times did you teach share your message, help educate in someone else's group, community, or membership. A summit is included. All right, how many articles did you publish? And when I'm talking about articles, I mean like a LinkedIn, like an article on LinkedIn, um, an article for Thrive, Medium, Forbes, Inc., Entrepreneur, a local paper, a local magazine, an online magazine, someone else's blog. How many articles did you write that were not in the container of your business that other people had the opportunity to read and experience your expertise? So how many articles did you write? Okay, next is how many blog posts did you create and publish on your own blog? I'm gonna say it again, just in case you're taking notes. How many blog posts did you create on your own blog, your own website? And then ha if you have a podcast, so not everybody has a podcast, I realize that, but if you have a podcast, how many episodes did you publish? So if you have a podcast, how many episodes did you publish? And then how many sales calls or how many discovery calls did you have? How many times did you have the opportunity to speak to someone one-on-one -on -one to share your services and products? 
How many times did you have a sales call or a discovery call? And then how many clients did you serve? How many paying clients did you have? So if you're a coach, how many, how many clients did you bring into your coaching program? If you have a membership, how many people did you bring into your membership? So how many people, how many clients did you have that paid you money for your service or product? Okay, now this is very important. I want you to make a list of all of the goals outside of your financial goals that you reached. So maybe like me, your goal was to write a book and you accomplished that, so you can check that off. Maybe it was to rebrand. You can check that off. Maybe it was to not work on the weekends. Check that off. So any goals that you had outside of your financial goals for your business, I want you to list them here. And this is very, very important because our financial goals are meaningful and they are great to have, but they are not the end all be all for success. So I want you to recognize the other goals that you did meet so that you don't beat yourself up over the financial goal because you can look at what you did accomplish. It's so important to see where you did accomplish things because that is positive reinforcement, especially going into a new year and setting new goals. When you look at the goals that you had that you didn't achieve, I want you to look at were they realistic goals or were they stretch goals? And I want you to take note of that because of the goals that you met, did you meet, did you only meet goals that were, you know, realistic, easy goals or did you have stretch goals that you met as well? And this is really important because if you are setting goals that are all stretch goals and you didn't meet any of them, then it's time to come back to reality and set goals that are more realistic for the time that you have to spend to achieve them, the actions that you're going to take to achieve them, as well as the mindset. Because if you are constantly setting goals that are big and audacious and almost impossible to reach, and I don't believe anything is impossible, I believe everything is possible, especially with faith, um, but the reality is if you are constantly setting goals that are not easy to achieve, you are just going to be in a cycle of negative mindset because every single time you're gonna see yourself as a failure. So I want you to take note of what goals were realistic and what goals were stretch goals. Okay, the next thing I want you to do is, let me see my notes here. Oh, this is also important. I want you to list everything you did for fun. Did you take a vacation? Did you, you know, go and spend a day shopping with your mom, your sisters, your daughter, whoever? What did you do for fun this year? And they don't have to be big, huge things. Maybe it was you, you took time to go see a movie and you hadn't been to a movie in two years. Or, you know, maybe it was you went to, I don't know, a museum that you had never been to before. Maybe you took an extra vacation. What did you do for fun? And I want you to recognize how much time you spent, this is important, how much time you spent in your business and working and then also how much time you gave yourself that grace to let go, be present, have fun, enjoy your family. Maybe you went to a college football game. Maybe you went to a college basketball game. Maybe you did something that you would not normally do, but you had an extraordinary time doing it. What did you do for fun? All right, so now you have this big list of questions, and I know it probably seems like a lot, but if you sit down, you can easily get all these statistics. If you have an email provider, you can see how many emails you, you published. You can get an idea on social media looking at your analytics. I think on Instagram, you can only go like a 90-day time period, but you can multiply that. You can have a pretty good idea, like when you were consistent, when you weren't consistent, you know, those different time blocks of the year. To get, a, to get an estimate of those numbers. So look at those and see like, you know, and then evaluate too, um, you know, what type of content were you putting out? Were you putting out content that provided value? It educated, it inspired. Because if you were putting out content just like quotes or things that were maybe not necessarily 
truly applicable to your business and how you serve your audience, you might want to rethink those types of posts that you were putting out last year. You can go really deep into this and see what the analytics were and what posts worked, what posts didn't. But for today, for this exercise, I just want to know how often you post, how many times you posted, how many times did you show up for your audience to be able to find you? Okay. Now, <laughs> I guess I should emphasize this too. The, the fact that you showed up on Instagram is, or Facebook or TikTok or wherever is fabulous. Um, I don't want you to get too into thinking about, um, I have to do more. I didn't do enough. I don't want you to think that because you weren't on Instagram every single day posting twice a day, that that's why you didn't get clients. Because you have to keep in mind there's an algorithm. There are factors that are out of our control. So when you're looking at these numbers, I don't want you to beat yourself up over them. That is the most important thing here. Do not beat yourself up over the numbers. Um, the fact of the matter is you could post two, two times a day to Instagram and your, your followers may not grow up, go up because you're not resonating or things weren't impactful or the algorithm just didn't show your stuff. Who knows? But what I want you to do is recognize what you did do and how much effort you did put in. And then you can evaluate later, like, well, maybe why didn't that work or why did that work? But it's important to know just how often you showed up and what value you were putting out for your audience so that they could really get to know you. The whole purpose of social media, I've said this a million times, is to get to, to build that no love and trust factor. You want people to trust because they're not gonna buy if they don't trust. So keep in mind why you're putting out content and keep in mind that this is to gain opportunities for you for not only to sell, but to collaborate and to build relationships um, for, for long-term success. That's what relationship building does for us. Okay, so enough said about all of that. I could go on and on and on. So now that you have this huge list of questions and you have these answers, you're gonna evaluate them. I want you to really look at what worked, what didn't work. Where did you spend your time that helped you convert your audience to clients? Where did you spend your time that made an impact? Where did you spend your time that made an impact on your business and on your clients? I want you to look at those things that you did that you know, without a doubt, had an impact, either on you or your business or your clients. Then, I want you to list out those things that you know you did this year that you didn't like doing, that were not effective, did not produce results, did not have an impact. The things that worked for you, the things you enjoyed doing, the things that helped you grow your business, helped you have an impact, those you're gonna keep for the next year. The others that didn't have an impact, that were frustrating, annoying, you're either going to stop doing them, scratch them off your list because they are wasting your time and they're bringing in negative energy into your business instead of positive. So you're going to stop doing them or delegate them if they are things that can provide value in your business but that you just don't want to do anymore. Okay, so now you have those two lists. From there, I want you to highlight the things you did well, the things that worked, get rid of the things that didn't. And now I want you to go through your list again and I want you to identify um, the measurable impact. So of those things where you had impact, either for your clients or for your business, I want you to list those things that were that were actually measurable. Like you can actually put a measurement to them to show what that impact was. Maybe it is um, a financial measurable outcome. Maybe it is just a statistic as far as um, you know this this had an impact because um, it transformed someone's life. That's measurable. It may not be measurable in a number, but it's measurable. Someone saw a significant difference in their, their life, their business, their personality, their journey. Um, something you did changed something for them. That's a positive impact that's measurable. So I want you to, to take a look of those things that were, were impactful. 
it, how many of those were, were indeed measurable. They should all be, but I want you to just take a look at that and then document the measure, document what that impact was, just so your brain can start to see, oh my gosh, I am worthy of people paying me money because I am having a significant impact. So it's really important to look at not only the things that, okay, I had an impact, but how did you have an impact? What was the measurable difference that you produced, either in your business or for a client? And then again, take those things that you did not have an impact when doing, and let's get rid of them. You don't need to continue to do them. Chances are they're not going to transform your business going forward if they haven't transformed your business yet. And if they are frustrating you and not working, then they're definitely not worth doing. If you feel like there's opportunity for the future in these tasks, then you need to delegate them. Because the more time and energy you put into this, doing these things that you don't wanna do, that you don't enjoy doing, that aren't having an impact, aren't giving you direct results, the more time you spend doing those, you're actually using money anyway. You're wasting money because you're not doing the things that will actually work and move the needle forward in your business because they don't have an impact. Okay, so that's enough on that. And now we're gonna talk about, um, now we're gonna talk about the last two things that I want you to do. And these are big lists, but it's okay because they're worth it. So I want you to make a list of the 25 things you did in your business this year that you are okay let me let me let me look at my notes real quick because there's two of them and I want to make sure I do the do them in order so I want you to make a list of the things that you did well the things that you did well in your business the actions you took that you know worked and that you did them well I want you to look at maybe personal improvement that you had. Maybe it was a mindset transition. Maybe it was dedicating time to focus on your business and journal about your mindset within your business. Maybe it's the impact you had, but what did you do well in your business this year? Maybe you were really great at creating content this year. Maybe you mastered your sales process and saw results from that. What did you do well this year? I want you to list out 25 things that you did well this year. Then I want you to list 25 things that you are proud of. There may be overlap and there may not be overlap, but I want you to list out 25 things that you are proud of. These could be a personal, personal things that you accomplished. These could be... Um, things in your business, but I want you to really, for this exercise, look more towards your business and the things you did in your business. Maybe if you lost 25 pounds, then that is a good thing for your business because you feel better, you have more energy, you have more focus. So you can, you can include things like that, but I want you to look, list out 25 things that you are proud of in your business from 2021. So 25 things that you did well and 25 things that you are proud of. There may be overlap and there may not be, it doesn't matter. I just want you to list 25 things in each category. And you may be sitting there thinking 25 things, I can't list 25 things. Oh yes, you can. And I guarantee you that some of them will be like minuscule. You'll think, well, that didn't really amount, but every single step you take, every single thing you did well this year in your business has set you up for success in 2022. Remember, we have to build the foundation before we can have long-term success. So every single step you took, everything you did well this year is going to result in more success for you next year. And you probably hear my dog barking, sorry. Um, okay, so just, you know, the whole key to that exercise. Sorry, she's barking and I, <laughs> oh well. Um, anyway, so the, the whole key for that is like I said, to think about building that foundation. So the more the more you did well this year, the more you're proud of this year, the more you're gonna be able to build on those things for next year. Okay, so the whole purpose in this exercise is number one, to evaluate in your business what worked, what didn't. What can you should you continue doing and what should you not continue doing? Um, I want you to focus on the positive because the more positive 
mindset and energy that you bring into your business for 2022, the more likely you're going to have success in 2022, the more likely you're going to be able to meet those goals in 2022. And remember, as you're setting your goals, look at the goals you met this year, look at how realistic they were, or if they were stretch goals, do not beat yourself up over not meeting the stretch goals and look at how you can re maybe redesign those goals for 2022 to make them so that they're less impossible to reach, but that, but that they are things that you can take intentional action on by creating a strategy now to be able to accomplish them for 2022. Because I know that God has placed a calling on your heart and I know that you are ready to take action and accomplish that. And all of these exercises will help you do that. Okay, I cannot wait to hear from you after you do this exercise. I want you to report back to me and tell me, like, did this help you? Take, did this help you to evaluate your year, to evaluate how you spent your time, to evaluate how you spent your energy, to evaluate the things that you did, and to look at all of the little things, all of those little baby steps that you took that you can be proud of, that you know you did well. Okay, so I'm super excited to hear from you. Put questions in the comments or um, send me a DM, however you want to connect with me, but definitely come back and let me know how this exercise impacted your viewpoint on your business.